in Hitler's Germany, in England, a poor refugee with, with no future, no opportunity of job. And he gives this wonderful speech to the, to the uh, policeman who's interrogating him. My wife was English. She would have loved to come back to England but it seemed to me that I would be letting down my country in its greatest need, and so she stayed at my side. When in summer, 33, we found that we had lost our children to the Nazi party, and I was willing to come, she died. None of my sons came to her funeral. Heil Hitler. I think it's one of the most affecting and also one of the most serious things they ever did. And it needed an actor of um, Anton Volbrook's technical ability to bring it off because it's a single, unbroken close-up. Quite an achievement. I remember the English countryside, the gardens, the green lawns, the weedy rivers and the trees. She loved so much. And a great desire came over me to come back to my wife's country. For Emmerich Pressburger, Theo's situation had great personal resonance. And this serves the truth. That was just Emmerich. I mean, he, was, he loved England more than anybody I've ever met. He was the biggest Anglophile you could ever possibly imagine. And I could, that was absolutely him. It was just his work. Whilst Clive holds on to the same values he held 40 years ago, Theo is aware that both the enemy and the nature of modern warfare have changed. This is not a gentleman's war. This time you are fighting for your very existence against the most devilish idea ever created by a human brain. Nazism. At a time when propaganda machines were, were, were churning all the time to show the nastiness of, of Germany, to make a film which showed the... the fraternal sense of honor amongst two high-born officers of those two countries seemed bizarre. Powell and Pressburger may have portrayed German soldiers in a sympathetic light before, but the character of Theo, coupled with Blimp's inability to grasp the nature of modern warfare, made the duo some very powerful enemies. Very quickly, news of it reached uh, Winston Churchill, and Churchill went spare. I mean, he had been fighting hard ever since he took over as Prime Minister to dispel the blimp image. In a sense, you can't blame Churchill. Um, in a sense, one of the odd things is, I don't, I don't know whether Churchill ever really felt this or dared to bring it to, his, to, his, to the surface of his mind, but Churchill was blimp. The Ministry of Information had opposed the film throughout its production, and it now looked as if the life and death of Colonel Blimp might never be released. The War Office, the Ministry of Information, did everything they could to try and stop the film, but actually the person who saved it was Arthur Rank. He was producing the film, paying for it, and apparently he stood absolutely firm behind Powell and Pressburger, despite the opposition, and insisted that the film got made exactly as they wanted, put it in his cinemas, in Odeon cinemas, and uh, showed it all around the country. In fact, they even advertised it as See the Band Film. <laughs> The life and death of Colonel Blimp cost over £188,000, an enormous sum for 1943. But for many years, the film was shown both in Britain and abroad in an edited version, robbing the film of 20 minutes and, more importantly, its flashback structure. When the film was finally restored in 1983, the re-released version of Blimp was hailed by critics as a lost masterpiece. Clive, you won't change, will you? And don't ever leave this house. No fear. Even if there's a second flood, this house shall always stand on its solid foundations. And we'll have a private lake in the basement. That's a promise. You stay just as you are till the floods come. Till the floods come. And this is a lake. And this is a lake. When the film was restored back to its original length and form uh, in the 1980s, Emmerich was, was deeply touched. And uh, he came along to the the premiere that we had of the, the new restoration. And he was so moved that he just couldn't speak because for him it was like a sort of resurrection. His favorite film had been brought back and he was, he was deeply touched by that. That's a promise you stay just as you are till the floods come. Till the floods come. And this is a lake. And this is a lake. Now here is the lake and I still haven't changed. I would 
be surprised that anybody could sit in front of the film and feel no sympathy for Colonel Blimp. I think that would be a bizarre person who could watch that and not feel. And some may say it's sentimental in, in, a, in, in a British sort of way, and it probably is, um, but then I'm a sentimentalist.